Nigel and Mike take a quick look around an OpenPower S812LC. So we shut down Power KVM and pulled the machine out of the rack, placed it on the table. Over here we have the IBM logo and a standard USB connector uh, 3. Up in the top corner we have the usual IBM serial number and model type sticker. Over here we have a power on and off button that also glows green or flashes when it's ready and there's an identification bright orange LED and the machine type in the corner. Mike's now going to pop the little handle and pull out one of our 6 terabyte disks. They're 7200 Enterprise class. We have the 12 of them in the bays at the front. It's a classic disk in a uh, a little carrier, uh, four little screws, and uh, you're away. A little bit more interesting around the back, where all the uh, ports are. Over on the right-hand side are four half-height PCIe uh, slots. Uh, we have in here uh, the Ethernet to 10 gigabit and to 1 gigabit ports in ours. Over here we have a little blanking plate. There may be uh, a door to board and uh, Ethernet ports later on. Two USB 3s. Here's the uh, VGA connector, and above that the serial connector if you've got a really dumb screen. Then we have the Ethernet port in here to, call, to talk to the BMC. Up in here we have the double disk carrier for the internal disks, and then we have the two 1200 watt power supplies. We can run on one power supply if you want to. Now Mike will pop out the little blue button. There we go, and then pull the handle out, and we'll pull out this carrier that actually has two discs on it. You've got to pull and you pull and you pull and out it comes. Um, and then uh, have a quick look at that. Two discs uh, back to back. Uh, these are the one terabyte discs in this case. Um, of course if you're running on those discs you can't do a hot swap but if you're running on the other discs then you could. Mark's going to quickly pull out a little power supply, uh, an intelligent uh, nice little unit. You can see some of the guts through the back there. Orange handle or that means that you can uh, plug it out while it's live. Not both of them, of course. Now we're going to lift the lid. Remove the retaining screw for the lid, pull it back about a centimetre, and we can just lift it off. Can't do that while it's in the rack. Um, it doesn't come out of the rack enough uh, to let you lift the lid off. Mike's now taking off the air dam. That makes sure that enough uh, air coming in the front will go past the Power 8 processor, and it's a cooling block there. It's going to flip over this um, two disc uh, carrier. Uh, we pulled those discs out earlier out the back of the machine. That would be normal way you do it. You don't normally lift this off unless you want to get to the uh, memory dims below. At the front in here then you have all the, the discs and the back plane with the cables there. Five uh, fans. They're not hot swap. In fact you can't get into the machine. So here, these bluish greenish black cables in here are coming over to the SATA controller over here. Adaptech. Uh, this was a simple one. It will do uh, RAID 1 and 0. Uh, the extra complicated RAID 5 one would has a battery uh, that you tuck into one of the other PCI slots. These four here are the L4 memory controllers and caching and they control the DIMM slots that are next door to them. They come in uh, four different sets in here. In this machine we have every other DIMM missing because we haven't got enough DIMMs to fill them all up. And in the middle there there's the Power 8 processor. It looks slightly golden coloured in, in practice. Uh, looks pretty good. We've seen similar connections before. Uh, this is the daughter card. The cable runs out here to the to control the internal disks. So let's finish off with a bit of recap. The Power 8 is either 8 cores or 10 cores, or 2 different gigahertz rating. Uh, memory, we've seen lots of the uh, DIMM slots in the machine, uh, 64 gig to a full terabyte. The internal disks up to 2, they're 1 terabyte or 6 terabyte. They're actually controlled by the little daughter board at the top of the picture. The front disks up to 12, 6 terabytes. Uh, they're controlled by Adaptec RAID adapters. There's simple mirror stripe version or there's the cached and battery backed up RAID 5 version. Alternatively, you can go fiber channel. There's an 8 gigabit fiber channel adapter available. There's a range of Ethernet adapters. It depends on how fast your backbone is in your computer room, I guess. 1 gig, 10 gig and 40 gig. At the moment, these are the operating systems supported. Uh, we expect this to expand uh, later on, but uh, Ubuntu were there first of all, then Red Hat and Power KVM 3.1. We've been running all three of these, uh, two of them on the internal disks and 
the uh, power KVM on a RAID pack in the front discs to give us uh, plenty of performance to support lots and lots of virtual machines. Of course, you can only run one of these at a particular time. There's the BMC processor. I'm not even sure where it is on the uh, the back plane there. Um, it runs the standard uh, RPMI tools and boots them to a uh, pretty boot. That's what ways we can actually get to the service processor. It also runs a little website uh, called the Advanced Systems Management. We can do all sorts of things in there from looking at the fan speeds and the temperatures and even upgrading the firmware. If you want more from me, then you can find me at Twister, Mr. Enmon. YouTube, I guess you found me, but my channel is Nigel A.R. Griffiths. The expert blog, I've actually got four articles on the S812 LC machine, including some sort of high resolution pictures. We also, if you're interested in AIX2, then there's the AIX Virtual User Group. They do uh, monthly webinars uh, about lots of topics uh, around the power machines, and then there's the Power Systems Technical Webinars as well. Uh, again, about once a month, we have uh, topics covering AIX, IBM, and Linux on Power.